high school hockey season is upon us, and former Minnesota Wild player and current Stillwater Boys varsity coach Greg Zanin tells us what to expect from the Ponies and beyond. Plus, what is going on with your Minnesota Wild? As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 149. Get geared up for the hockey season with SodaStick.com. They've got all your favorite player tees from Mark andre Fleury to Matt Zuccarello to Ryan Hartman giving you the bird. SodaStick.com has you covered. Not only in just in hockey, though. You got Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Twins, Minnesota Timberwolves, whatever your Minnesota sports team is, SodaStick has you covered with the best gear available. Don't forget to toss down Bar Down Beauties at checkout for 15% off at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Kirsten Kroll. He's producer Fred. We are here with your Bard on Beauties episode 149. Guys, let's just, let's not tiptoe around it. We'll get to some good stuff later down the road in segment two with Greg Zanin. We'll talk about players that need to step up for the Minnesota Wild. But currently we are recording this on a Friday per usual. Minnesota Wild losing to not only the Seattle Kraken, who Kirsten made fun of last week in in our recent episode, but uh, they lose to Martin Jones, who has a shutout for the first time in like two years. Um, The home woes continue they have only won two games at home of a possible six Kirsten I I don't I got nothing I mean to go off of that I mean yes I did make fun of the Kraken and I still stand by what I said last week um that being said in regards to last night's loss I think we were just that bad yeah I think the wild literally were just that bad it's just there were very in I mean talking to Dean Evson post game and again we get to emphasize and discuss this game because the wild have four days off. They played like they were off last night. Like they didn't even show up. They do not play again until Tuesday at LA. They start a three game road trip, but I think that's, what's more concerning to me. They came out just incredibly flat. Like you have your last game before a four day break. I get a 10 game roadie. It's a long trip. I'm not negating that, but they have today off from practice. They have a public soft practice on Saturday. They've got Sunday off and then they practice again Monday. Like there was absolutely no reason to perform uh, with so little energy that they did against Seattle. Yeah. And I mean, I, even in that first period, I heard a lot of people say like, where was Kirill Kaprizov? Granted, you don't want it to be all on one player, but also when we are used to seeing what we do from Kirill night in night out. And when he's getting paid as much money as he is, and he has the expectation to be a star player, where was he? I don't mm-hmm. know where he was in the first period, but also not even just on Kirill. Where was any of our offense? I mean, I know there's a number of injuries right now, a number of guys down, but this is the opportunity where you want those guys to step up. You want a bigger role on the team, step up. This is the time to do it. And literally no one was impressive last night. Not even one goal. Like this was, it was so bad. It was, I mean, I predicted a hat trick. For Kirill Kaprizov, because this was an you opportunity You also predicted for him. seven goals. I predicted seven goals. They, they did zero. The good news is I can now go back to enjoying Taco Bell versus getting it for pregame meals. So get that you off the radar. That going for you. I have that going for me. No, and, you know, you alluded to, Kirsten, the fact that this was the opportunity for these younger guys to shine. They went 11 forwards and seven defensemen, which is always kind of a crapshoot. But again, why recall somebody? I get that. I'm not negating that. But the problem is... Again, we've talked about it at length before. The Minnesota Wild are in cap hell, right? So you're going to need to rely on these guys, whether it's due to injury or whether it's just in general, because you cannot go out and sign the big names, the veteran players, the experienced guys that are gonna you're going to need. You're going to have to rely on these small contracts, these young guys who are at the entry-level contracts. Um, in addition, yes, I miss Jordan Greenway. Yes, I miss Marcus Foligno, Ryan Hartman, Brandon Duham. Yes, the Minnesota Wild clearly do too. However, I'm going to point this out. 
you are not missing a Kirill Kaprizov or Matt Zuccarello or superstar players. I mean, Brandon Duhame is a fourth line forward and Ryan Hartman was maybe just starting to generate some momentum, but it's not like he was necessarily what he had shown us last year. Felino, you're missing probably a size Greenway. You're missing their size. Absolutely. But you're not missing these top offensive forwards. I mean, where was Tyson Jost? Where has he been? I thought he might be the guy Mason Shaw. I thought showed up like, I just, I, it's, it's frustrating to watch and it's more frustrating than it's been doing being done in St. Paul, which has long been this Mecca of hockey hard for opponents to play in. And it's anything but that this so far this season, they need to do like a big vibe check or something in the locker room. <laughs> I don't know what it is like a little meditation circle, like whatever Tom Brady has done in the past, like with his crystals, whatever, not like aligning of the chakras. I don't know. <laughs> The wild need to yes, do Tom that. Brady like, of the, the past, are not just Tom Brady off. currently. <laughs> like, yeah, don't want to do anything that Tom Brady's doing right now. Uh, no, mm-hmm. not right now. But I mean, the Wild are kind of playing like Tom Brady esque right now. Yeah, recently. Like, I mean, recent, um, t- I'm done talking. Jesse, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> back to me again. There's a this three game road trip. Do you, and it's I mean the season it's never going to get easier at this point, right? Like again, every team, and it's I think even more problematic because. The central division as it sits, those teams are, those teams are looking pretty hot. Winnipeg's doing well. I mean, St. Louis is, they're worse than the wild. So who that's good. But I mean, these points are starting to truly matter again. I still stand by, I would rather this lull and the struggles be now at the beginning of the year versus come February, March, or April. However, you need to start getting some points here. Yeah, I agree with you, but I just, I don't know how to fix it. Like, I I mean, granted, I don't have to fix it. So thank don't, God that's no. not my job. But how do you go about fixing these problems? I mean, uh, I, it's, it's just so frustrating because it's, you'll see it's, they literally pull like a 180 on you. Like Tuesday night in Minnesota, they picked the win over Montreal. Like it was fine. It was a fine game. Mark andre Fleury too. I mean, he was fine. And mm-hmm. then you look at, Thursday night's game. So AKA last night. And it's just like, what happened? Where is literally the entire team? Mm. I just, I don't know what you do to go about fixing it. Is it hard for you to stay hyped and happy on screen during games? Like, yes. (laughs) Um, when I'm not on camera that last night, this was my face. Cause I get to sit in the press host. And I was like, especially after that third goal, we're like, are you joking? (laughs) So I could just sit up in the press box and just bitch and like make fun of the team. It's fantastic. I mean, I'll yeah. be honest last night there got to a point where I had the lead where I had the whole story written. I was like, I don't even want them to score. I'm done. I'm mailing it in. This team mailed it in. I'm mailing in my story, I, whatever. Make I'm it the headline. It. Yeah, exactly. Like it was mailing just, it in just like the wild. I, I just want our vacation, you know, and I get not wanting to like, obviously harp on last season, right? Last season's over best regular season, yada, yada, yada. But we were told this is the same team and returning it is the same team. But I think you are starting to recognize again. And we knew this. This is a very blue collar team, right? This Minnesota Wild squad is very blue collar, especially without Kevin Fiala. Kevin Fiala was an elite scorer, right? And and continues to be. But you you need more than just one guy to step in and be that guy. Now you need every single player to be contributing. And they're just not getting that. So I think it's becoming more and more evident that they are definitely aren't the same team as last year in a far worse way yeah I again like I just I look at it I'm like I just don't even understand because even players again referencing Kaprizov that you expect to kind of fill in for other players and be that one stable force each and every game he wasn't last night Matt Zuccarello also wasn't like there's just you could go up and down the list and I don't even think like you can point out things that the team really did well going up and down the list last night for each individual player. I just have a laundry list of things for each player. Like what was this last night? I want you to join me in the locker room next time and bring your laundry and like roll like a scroll. Like, okay, who Brodes, gotcha. All right. This is what I said. I mean, that was one of the worst games I've seen from Jonas Brody and Matt Dumba continues to unimpress. I think he's lost a shot entirely. Like last year, you saw in the playoffs, it was hard for him to even raise his arm following that pec surgery, whatever. And I think it's because it was obviously re-aggravated coming into this year. He said he was ready hundred percent. And I just, he doesn't have the bomb that made him such a weapon. Like that is he's been de-weaponized. He's been de-utilized, which 
I'm going to boldly predict. And I haven't, I've never really gotten high on like, Oh, Matt Dumba, get the pitchforks, like whatever. I think he's fine. Again, I know, I think, you know, what kind of player to expect of him or what kind of play to expect of him. I'll be shocked if he's not traded uh, before the season. Like, I think he's, he will not finish the year with, with this Minnesota wild team, because I think Garen's going to have to do something either part ways with them naturally or try to get something for him. And I mean, he's depreciating in value, you know, but going off that, like he has made it and stuck around this <laughs> long. We, ha- uh, we've talked about this before we, there have been the wild have just been so gung ho on Matt Dumba, got rid of Alex Tuck to protect, protect Matt Dumba. He has found a way to stick around this long. I just think he's, we're stuck with him forever. Like I really don't, <laughs> think he's going to be traded like yes I think he should be but I don't think that he's going to be but he's never been this bad like he's been injured I don't think he's ever been this and it's still early it truly is still fairly early but I just I don't know Fred what you got well I mean it's also that he's he's always had that good Matt bad Matt like either he's Matt 24 or Matt 55 you know oh, what I mean? It's, like it's, that. It's always like that back and forth. It's like he always had that upside, but he also had that risk. Now he doesn't have that upside. What is actually the benefit of keeping him? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he just, I I think, a great point. God, that was good, Fred. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Matt 24, Matt 55. He doesn't say much, but when he does. Fred bombs. <laughs> <laughs> you need a little <laughs> bomb drop, like sound effect, like exactly except better than that (laughs) but you know if if the wild players are tired of listening to dean evison if for whatever reason it's not clicking what he's saying and clearly it's not because look at the seattle kraken game exhibit a i will bring my scroll into the locker room post game and i will harp on every single player i will not show any mercy if that is what needs to be done i will do it i'm proud of you i would love to see it i would feel like maybe you would button up as soon as you got in there you'd be like "Mm, never mind yeah, literally, people. but also like my form of being mean is not mean. So <laughs> I don't know what would come out of my mouth. I got to side. I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop something cool here first. Uh, <laughs> I did a I'm doing a, a program feature on the goaltending tandem for the Wild, right? So I got to chat with Mark Andre Fleury, and he is he's so happy, right? Like constantly, like he reminds me of just this little kid who just loves hockey. He's all excited to get out there and play. Um, and so I brought that up to him, and he's like. Yeah, you know, sometimes the coaches they tell me be mean, be serious, and he does this little like be mean, be like it like a child, like he can't even make a mean face, and it's just it was it was the cutest thing ever. He's like, yeah, I can't do that. I can only do that for a day or two. So I just thought it was funny. That's wholesome. It, I love it was that. so wholesome. Exactly. Go get that game day program coming up next home game. Uh, that story's in there. There you go. Uh, maybe Fred can drop in some Fred bombs in the locker room. Get the get the boys stirring. You know. Capri Watch. Just like, who's this asshole? <laughs> this fucking guy. Ooh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really cursed like that before. All right, back. Where's um, Flugelheimer for Jesse in all these now, episodes? <laughs> I know. I'm usually pretty guy because you don't need to curse just to curse, just because you can. You know, Jesse's One day just that fired up about the Seattle Minnesota <laughs> game. That's what it really is. It was boring. All right, again, I'm gonna. Oh be my selfish. gosh, I was. It I was will boring. be honest. I was bored. I was on the stage working the game last night. I just kept looking over at my co-host, and I'm like, "This is so boring. I want so to go home." I did. Yeah, it was just. I wasn't into it. The good news is, I can. Uh, I don't have to get Taco Bell for pregame anymore anymore which i'm thrilled about truly thrilled taco bell still looking for your sponsorship shout out to us uh speaking of sponsors and partners in case you guys missed it yesterday we did drop it to give us a little excitement during the minnesota wild game next live show november 18th 7 to 8 p.m at ziggy's on main in stillwater it's going to be an epic time that's a friday night ladies and gentlemen we also have an autographed kirill kaprizov jersey to give away stay tuned for details on that that is courtesy of one of our friends on the american cancer society board uh super excited he wanted to just give that as a reward to our listeners but we're going to make you come out and see us and meet us on a friday night in stillwater have a beer talk some hockey uh as always that live show presented by our friends over at green belt there will be green belt specials going on uh, but you know, just come hang with us. Might be a bar on beauty's bar crawl. All right. We already got a babysitter. Husband and I are going out. We're hitting the town. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited. I have never actually like genuinely gone out with Jesse before. Yeah. 
I'm ready to see bar crawl, Jesse. Please prepare. Please prepare. The Wild don't play the next day either. I mean. I mm. don't even know how to prepare, but I'm bracing myself. Let's oh, just say You that. know, the liquid, the liquid uh, hydration things are those like little like packets. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm old. That's what I need to do. Uh, well, I, I think I'm young still. <laughs> so you I have a whole box. I have them all the time. Actually, it was one of you young folks. Uh, shout out to Erin Lawfrey, who uh, used to work for the Minnesota Wild. She's the one that turned me on to those because I maybe showed up hungover to a game one day. And she's like, you need these. I was like, yes, they're a lifesaver. They really are. They are. They are. So again, November 18th, that is coming up next week by the time you're listening to this. So come check us out. It's going to be fun. Right, Fred? Fred's going to Fred's gonna be there. Fred bombs. Fred bombs all over the place all over the place um speaking of bombs greg zan is going to drop a few on us talking high school hockey he is now the varsity coach uh over in stillwater former minnesota wild defenseman can't wait to catch up with him check in on your minnesota high school hockey so we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back We're back. Joining us now, former Minnesota Wild defenseman and current Stillwater Boys varsity coach, Greg Zanin. Greg, what's going on? How are you? Uh, just chomping at the bit to get the season started. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, let's talk about that. You started, I think it was what, 2017, 18, kind of volunteering with the boys varsity squad. You moved into an assistant role. Now head coach, second season? Uh, fourth, fourth season. Fourth season. Jeez, see, yeah. this is math. I don't do math, Greg. This well, is why you I'm know away. everybody kind of forgets about that COVID season. It was so short, short and sweet. Thing. Nobody really remembers that one. There was a thing. Uh, <laughs> how's how's it been going? I mean, how do you like coaching? First of all, I mean, from going from player to coach, sometimes it seems like a natural transition just to be involved in the game, but also it's a lot different too. It was definitely something I never saw myself doing. I mean, I remember my last couple of years just being like, there's no way I want to be one of those guys. You you see what coaches, you know, especially the professional ranks go through and, you know, the time they put in and it was like, you know, it's just not really for me, but uh, you know, took a couple of years away and just kind of watched my kids and then slowly integrated myself on the ice through, through my kids when uh, actually my daughter was eight, started helping out with U eights and then, kind of Matt Doman, who was the coach at the time, got me at the rink and he's like, hey, come out with the high school boys every once in a while. So kind of started dabbling and started to really enjoy, you know, giving back and, you know, trying to give give the guys something that I've learned along the way to, you know, maybe help them along with their careers. And I uh, just kind of got into it that way. And I'm having a lot of fun with it and really enjoy the guys that we have out here. I mean, I run a lot of hockey camps now throughout the summer. That's even deeper into, you know, as through the summer where we're, you know, peewees and bantams and then the high school kids. And then I move into the fall and I'm doing squirts and mites. And so I'm kind of, I'm all over the map right now. So I, I must be enjoying it. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I have to imagine too, that it's gotta be pretty rewarding as well to be coaching the next generation of hockey players. Uh, yeah. You know, I like to, I like to see them go and, and, and boys hockey is so different because they leave us and now, you know, they're kind of, almost forced to go play junior for a couple of years before they can get into these college, you know, colleges want older kids now and all the sorts of things that they're doing, but uh, seeing them go, you know, we have, you know, one or two a year go off and play juniors. And we've had a couple now over the last couple of years, get scholarships and playing at a, at a higher level. And it's great to see. We had a couple of kids at uh, NHL uh, summer camps this year, which is good to see. And, um, you know, just to be able to see them grow from what they were here when I when I first came to to where they're at now is uh, it's pretty exciting to see. And, you know, I still try to keep in touch with as many of the guys as possible, just, you know, via either text or see them around the rinks and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, hopefully I'm having some sort of impact. You know, you mentioned the the college path. You took the college path. It seems that Division One is getting a lot more respect, not that it ever was, you know, necessarily disrespected, but more and more players are choosing that route. How helpful is it that you have had that experience um, of playing division one hockey to really kind of help some of these players navigate that navigate juniors and kind of everything that comes post high school career. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, just to be able to have a, a little bit of a mindset of how it is. I mean, it's even I mean, now I look back or I talk to guys. I went to UNO, talked to the coaches there and things have changed so much since I was there. I mean, I know it, <laughs> It's a long time ago. It was almost 20 years ago now, but it's changed so much. So always trying to stay in the know of, you know, so we can help these guys. And 
um, you know, having contacts to be able to find out information when parents have questions or kids have questions. I think it's a valuable resource to be able to help them along the way. I mean, my path is a lot different than what a lot of Minnesota kids path is because you got high school hockey. I mean, I left home at, like most Canadians at 16 years old, went and played junior kind of, you know, was gone and tried to figure my own path out. And it led me to Nebraska, which in turn, you know, was the right choice for me. But um, I think still, I think it's more and more in Canada, people are coming down and playing, you know, division one. Um, I still think the path up there, the traditional path is to go play in the Canadian Canadian junior league and play in the dub or the O and things like that. But I think it's growing uh, definitely division one's growing a lot since, since I came down. You know, you mentioned the Minnesota path, which is so incredibly unique, even amongst other States. I remember talking to Charlie Coyle about it and he's like, I just, we've never would do that even in Massachusetts, right? We don't stay and play for high school. Just how truly special is that? Especially because you said you were, you know, helping out kind of youth levels and you've seen these guys and how special that bond is of these players that start playing hockey together at five, six years old, and they want to keep that bond and play for their high school team. I, you know, I really think it's amazing. Um, And we try to, you know, tell the guys it's, and it's going to sound horrible, but it's really the last hockey that they're going to play if they play yeah. after high school that's like very family oriented and you know we want to see you know you go to junior you kind of just become a number I mean I'm sure you've heard that from a lot of people you're just <laughs> if you're not <laughs> what have you done for me lately is kind of what you know the mentality is and here we're trying to get them to grow and you have that those special bonds with like you said people that you've played with since you were maybe five six years old that you get to play at such a high level with and just possibly have the chance to go play at the X and play in a state term and, and have all these amazing experiences where, you know, my youth hockey was, you play, you know, you probably maybe go to a provincial tournament and see where you go. But our whole goal is to get out of there as soon as we can to go play junior. Mm -hmm. Um, This mentality of staying around and playing for your, your home school and living at home and, you know, having those friendships, I, I think it's truly special. Well, also speaking of playing at the X, you played a few with the Minnesota Wild. And what was your time like playing on that big stage there in Minnesota? Uh, it was a lot of fun. I, uh, you know, unfortunately, we weren't as as good as we we hoped to be when we were all there. But uh, <laughs> it was it was great. Uh, my wife actually uh, was born in Hastings, lived in Hastings all growing up. And we met down in uh, Nebraska. So it was a good chance for us to come back and spend some time with her family uh, for the three years. And uh, it, it was it was special. I mean, I got to play with some great players here and um, kind of expanded my role from what I was in, in Nashville and the, the the amount of time I got the ice time I got to play and players I got to play with like Brent Burns and uh, on the back end. Uh, Merrick Zalicki was my partner for for a couple of years. You know, it was just a great experience, a great chance for for me to kind of step out of what I was uh, looked upon in Nashville. You know, like a five, six. I got to play a little bit more three, four minutes, was which was really special. Yeah, you guys didn't have like a Kirill Kaprizov or anything. To no, maybe help elevate, right? <laughs> no. might have been, might have been a little bit helpful, but you know, we were competitive and we played hard, and uh, it was just and it and it was a different time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that was still a time where where teams were still super stacked. You had your Detroit's, and it was it was it was tough to get through and tough to battle through those games. And um, but definitely had a, you know time of my life was obviously playing in the NHL. Do you think you could play in today? Because today's game is so incredibly different, right? Especially your defensive, you know, it's it's the very offensive defenseman these days too. And the offense that you have to try to stop are the Kirill Kaprizov, Connor McDavid. Like, could you, what would you do against <laughs> Connor McDavid? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I was actually watching Connor play last night, late at night before I went to bed. And it's just the, the speed that he plays with, even Kaprizov, like the, the speed that the guys play with, I mean, I, there's no way I could step in now and be like, oh, yeah, I can – no, no way, no, no, no chance. But, you know, back maybe in my younger days and, you you know, everybody's training different than we trained back then and it was a big emphasis on strength and, um, you know, the size that you play with where I think now it's kind of, yeah, you need to be strong, but it's your agility, your speed, your – there's the NHL has changed quite a bit since, you know, I definitely came into the league. I remember – my first year in the minors, I came in as a 200 pound defenseman. And at the end of that year, they're like, you're way too light. You gotta, you gotta gain muscle. You gotta, and I'm like too late, 200 pounds. I mean, that's a lot of weight already. 
yeah. and I got, I was able to put the weight on and I was 215. And then that was the year of the lockout, the entire season lockout. And I came back the next year and they're like, now you're too heavy. Now you got to be like, this. <laughs> it's like, come on guys, make up your mind. Now I got to lose all this weight. Yeah. But I think that's where the NHL has gone. It's all about speed and offense. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still some great defensive defensemen in the league, but everybody can skate. Everybody can get up and down the rink. And um, I think if I was back, you know, I think I would have done the training different and, you know, possibly could play. I don't know. Hopefully, yeah. you know, I have an act for the game, a mind for the game. And I think that's a, a big thing that's is still, you know, you got to be able to play the game. Everybody kind of finds their way and you, you find your niche and you, you can get things done. Right. No, still definitely a lot of value it'd be scary there. to play. It'd be scary to play now. Those guys are <laughs> just way too fast. I just sit on the ice and be like, all right, see you. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I say this every episode, but some of us here, AKA me can't even skate. I try I no imagining me on that. <laughs> She absolutely not. But um, you talked too about how you were watching McDavid a little bit last night. And when you do watch games now, do you ever point out or like think to yourself like, oh, like this is what I would do. Like if I were in this situation out on the ice or I would be here or whatnot. Do you ever kind of just like in your head, like that guy sucks. He's not good. No, <laughs> just chirping I think I, you know, now it's definitely a, a coaching mindset. Like I, I watch to see what, with how the game's evolving, how we can evolve our game, you know, at our level. Um, it, it's always kind of tough to come back to the rink and be like, did you guys watch Connor McDavid last night? I mean, he's the best for a reason. I mean, we just don't have players that are quite there, but we're trying to teach them if, you know, if hockey's the path, you guys got to learn how to be able to do these, these skills and these, you know, whether it's a setup in an offensive zone or a defensive zone face off, or we got to be able to get these things done and you got to be able to change things on the fly. I mean, when I played, it was, you know, one shift, you could be playing a two, one, two, the next shift you're back out there, you're playing a one, two, two, cause you're protecting a lead. Being able to transition like that on the bench is a huge asset that, that players need to have. And, um, you know, you see kids come up from Bantams and stuff like that. And their eyes are just like deer in a headlights when you're like, Hey, we're playing a one, two, two what's that? What do you mean? What's that? Like, come on, we got to be able to know these things. So trying to pick up what's going on in the leagues so we can make these kids as um, successful as possible is kind of the way I watch a game now. I mean, I don't really, they're there for a reason. They're the best of the best. And, you know, I remember getting booed and <laughs> yelled off the ice all the time. And, you know, you're, you're always thinking about those people and you're like, Hey guy, you're not down here. You know, I'm down here for a reason keep your mouth shut while you're sitting up in the stands there. But, um, you know, and I, so I don't look at the game like that. I look at it as they're the best and like, what are they doing to, to be there? And why is that guy on the ice all the time? Well, this, these are the reasons why, like, look at his outlet pass or McDavid, look at him blow up the wing or, you know, Kaprizov. Why is he always in the ice? Because he's, he has to be, he always demands the puck. And when he has it, something magic happens. So, I mean, it, it's hockey's come a long, long way and his, I mean, I know, especially playoff time, we, you know, have our in-house bar and me and my oldest daughter, we, we hunker in and we're in for the night watching, you know, as many games as we can in a night, just because it's so exciting and entertaining from, you know, where the game has gone. So you're saying when the fans are yelling, shoot on the power play, oh, you're not yeah. like <laughs> hearing that and being like, oh, I should probably shoot the puck. That's not, yeah. uh, it never crossed your mind as a player. Oh, you guys don't see the four people in front of me that I can't get the shot through. I'm trying to change my <laughs> angle here. Relax. It's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, those people. Yeah. But I was never on the power play, so I didn't have to worry about that. It was more like, <laughs> come on, Zan, and block that shot, you bum. <laughs> That's probably what I was hearing from the stands. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking of blocking shots, what was do you have like one in particular that just sticks with you? Worst shot you've hardest shot you ever taken, worst block you've ever taken? Oh, I don't know. There's uh, actually before I got to play with Eric Johnson in Colorado, he actually broke my ankle when I was with the Wild with a shot that was even. I don't even. I was just in the lane. I was trying to box my guy out and it just hit me in the ankle in the right spot. I don't know how, but broke my ankle. Um, didn't really know it was broken until a couple days later. So I played back to back games on it. Uh, I've had, a, you know, just the broken bones. I broke my hand when I was in Nashville blocking a Crosby shot. Um, probably the most. And I don't know if I ever, I think I blocked one or two, but when Shea Weber, when I went to Minnesota and Shea was still with Nashville, 
he was always the guy that I was like, oh my God, just please don't take a one-timer right now. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I ever had to block his, but um, you know, some of the best shooters I've had the the chance to block Stamkos from off in his little corner there was always the, Hey, that's your guy. <laughs> well, yeah, but he's way, that's your guy. And <laughs> you do whatever you can to, you know, help your team win. And that just happened to be my, my niche was, you know, getting, being a, being a second goalie out there with all, without all the pads. So um, I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, you know, I got still some bumps and bruises that, you know, shoulders don't work properly, but nothing <laughs> that's keeping me, off the ice or away from doing things with my kids. So, so I'm thankful for that. Did you ever dabble in like beer leagues then too? I mean, coaching, it sounds like that's obviously keeping you incredibly busy along with being dad. No, you didn't go out no, there. No, <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's a little, me, me and my brother dabbled in some beer leagues while I was still playing and needless to say, got kicked out of a couple leagues in the same <laughs> week. So we, we try to stay away from, I, I enjoy the game enough with what I'm doing. I, you know, I truly, the way I played the game, I have a hard time going out and playing. I've played in one like charity tournament with a buddy of mine and I had a lot of fun, but felt myself reverting back to things that I would normally do. And I, I just don't need to be blocking shots at <laughs> 42 years old anymore, but it's just so natural. Like even if I'm skating with my guys, like in the summertime, I always find myself in the lane and I'm not even wearing pads. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I can't be, this isn't right. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. But um, it's just old habits die hard. So I, I just keep myself out of those situations. No, I absolutely love that. You know, earlier you had mentioned watching games. That's such a learning tool that I think more and more coaches are recognizing, right? Like, yes, you watch a hockey game for the enjoyment. You're a fan of the wild of the penguins, whomever it might be. But that is such a learning tool. I remember Jake Gensel specifically had said, I mean, obviously his dad coaching the Gophers, right? He watched so much hockey, but he's one of the most intelligent players I think I've seen in of today's game. And he said, he gets that from just constantly watching how much of a learning tool is that for players? And do you write, is that kind of any homework that you give the guys? Not that again, I'm sure you have to encourage them to watch a hockey game, but to not watch <laughs> it for the, the fun, but to watch it for kind of some of the technical aspects of the game too. I think that's the toughest part is getting them to watch it for, for a learning process. Like they yeah. all like to watch it. You hear them talk about it. And they're like, Oh, did you see Caprice? You see him do that. And I'm like, yeah, but how did he get to that situation? Well, I don't know. Well, there was like four passes before he got it and then dangled that guy. Like, I, I don't think they watch it to that extent. I mean, we try to do enough video of our own, um, trying to teach them, you know, bits and pieces off of themselves and hopefully, you know, integrating that they, they end up watching the game that way. But I don't think a lot of them do. I, I hope some of them do. Um, it's actually exciting this year for high school hockey, joining up with uh, MN Hockey TV and Speedio and having rinks in all the buildings this year and being able to see, you know, and a lot of stuff that the Speedio company is doing with, you know, tracking shifts and the kids will be able to watch their own shifts after every game versus waiting for me to break down video and show them individually. We'll be able to send them their shifts. Uh, and I think it's like a six hour, seven hour turnaround. So they'll be able to watch them the next day and be able to, you know, decipher their own, their own kind of things and then be able to come back to us and be like, Hey, can we watch your shift? Can you explain? And we're, we're trying to get ourselves into that realm of, you know, when I played obviously in the NHL and I'm sure it's way different. Now you see them on the bench with the iPads and they're talking about it right away. I mean, we still had to go into the dressing room and talk about it, but getting them to learn off of their own mistakes or their own, um, you know, right doings to, to become better is huge. And we try to use that as much as possible. We don't try to, overkill it because they are still teenagers and you can see them as you talk and talk and they just turn their brains off and it's like oh i wonder what's on youtube um we try <laughs> to stay TikTok away from to that. make real quick <laughs> yeah exactly we try to you know get them watching themselves so they can learn off of their own mistakes own mistakes or their teammates mistakes um which i think has helped us along the way i mean we try to play a d zone that's very pro style and there's a lot of learning and it's taken me almost two years to get the our seniors now that really grasp it. And it'll be a, a learning lesson for our younger kids coming in or our sophomores, but um, getting them to play that style and be able to, to do those things it came a lot from watching videos. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely a learning tool. Hopefully they go home and watch hockey that way, but I just, 
you know, they're still, they're still the teenagers at, at the end of the day and they're just watching it for enjoyment because it's on and um, they'll get there. If they're really serious about it, they eventually, you know, talking to guys that have moved on now that are uh, like Cooper Wiley, he's D man of mine a couple of years ago was in St. Cloud and just, you know, you know, thank you for, you know, teaching me about this because then I learned it even more when I got into junior and now I'm in college and it's like, Whoa, you know, there are big things that they've learned, learned along the way. And it's great to hear that guys are using them as, as they move on. Yeah, definitely. And another thing to ask you about too, is you've teamed up with Thomas Vanek as coaching now. How has that been? We've done nothing. I mean, we can't, <laughs> we, we can't do what is there to do. We can't that's even fair, talk that's to fair. our own. We can't even talk to our own guys right now. Like, <laughs> um, we've had. I mean, Thomas has been around now a couple of years. He actually helped us out um, with captains' practices last year when he was coaching Bantams. Um, so our older guys know him. Um, obviously, he has a wealth of knowledge that is going to be really helpful this year, and uh, especially for our forwards and our power play and um it's exciting uh we we have a a good relationship we've had you know obviously conversations we're getting we're actually gonna hopefully meet next week and get ourselves prepared for tryouts here and um we we kind of have the same ideas of how we want this thing to go and to to have bring him on and be able to share what he has for the offensive side of the puck is just going to be huge because then I have my what I can share on the defensive side of the puck and hopefully we can put together a pretty solid team this year and be be very competitive, which we're super excited about, especially, you know, the returning guys we have, we got guys you know, in almost every position that are, are going to be, are going to be huge for us in the sophomore class coming off a of third place at the state tournament last year for Bantams, uh, you know, they're, they're getting ready to, you know, step in and take some spots and, and, and make some noise in this league. So, you know, hopefully we're very, we come together as a group quickly and uh, we can show uh, Minnesota high school hockey, what we're all about. Yeah, because you and Vanek just kind of missed each other, right? When he came to Minnesota, like he was a couple years after you? He was a couple years after I moved on. Yeah, I was okay. playing. I was with the Florida organization when he came to Minnesota. So, but, uh, okay. you know, we, we we had seen him around while he was still playing. He'd come out every, he, we actually live uh, very close to each other. Even when he was playing, uh, his wife was still here, I believe. And his, uh, his kids were going to school here and playing with our youth association. So we'd see them in passing. And then, you know, obviously now with kids, my kids are playing with Saha. His kids are, were playing with Saha. His younger boys are still playing with Saha. So we see each other passing um, all the time. Actually, my youngest is the same age as his youngest. So they don't oh, play nice. on the same team yet. But that's because yeah. I got a goalie. I don't know how that happened. Oh, you let my, that happen? My, my son is a goalie and his boys are uh, both forwards, obviously. So, um just playing a division apart this year, but yeah. it's, it, it's going to, it's going to be good. I think the, the kids are going to love them. Like I said, a lot of the old, well, a lot of the younger kids know him as well. He coached a lot of the younger kids, uh, a lot of the sophomores coming in um, and then helping us with captain's practices. My older guys have familiarity with them. So it, it's going to be a super smooth transition. I mean, he's Minnesota royalty, but I always forget I'm old as well. So like, do a lot of these teens know who you guys are? Are they familiar that you guys had these careers and, at all i mean do they watch youtube highlights anything like that i think there's a lot of youtube going on i know definitely <laughs> with my younger like my peewees and stuff that i coach and they're like you played for the wild when and i'm like you weren't even born yet Zip yeah it. right and then they'll come back the next day and they'll be like coach i watched you on youtube and i saw you do this and i'm like yeah don't do that that wasn't <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the, the older kids, I know, well, I guess that was a couple years ago. Now, a couple years ago, I had kids that lived in my neighborhood when I played for the wild. And I actually went out on the outdoor rinks with them when they were like nine and 10 years old. And they're like, I can't believe you're my coach. We skated together. And I was like, well, that's, that's the circle of life, I guess, circle of <laughs> hockey. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the younger kids know of us, but idea of our stats or kind of our plan maybe vanek more they probably know more about vanek he he lasted a little longer than i did so <laughs> well and he's got the gopher pedigree right he can't can't exactly. get away from the gopher pedigree yeah. here yeah. uh you know you had mentioned looking to make some noise again for the stillwater boys varsity team. before we let you go i want kind of a prediction how do you think 
the team's going to shape up. I know the season hasn't yet quite kicked off, so you're not sure what you're working with, but who are the big rivals that you're looking to eye down? I, uh, I know there's quite a few out there. I'm a Matami and Zephyr, by the way, just a shout out to them. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, what are you looking at for, for the year? What are your, what's your prediction for the ponies? We have a super tough schedule this year. I mean, we had some things happen in our conference where we lost, uh, we lost Irondale out of our conference. So we, we shifted down to a nine team conference. So we're actually only playing um, one conference game per team this year. Uh, we have a couple that we took out basically as non-conference games against section opponents that we want to play. So we got like white bear and Crete and twice, and we got Eastridge twice, but uh, you know, we're, we're really trying to establish ourselves in the West. We are playing Maple Grove. We got Eden Prairie. We're going to go play Rogers. Um, you know, obviously for us, our biggest rivals are white bear and Hill. And those are teams that we got to get by to, to get to a state tournament and, you know, you throw Gentry in that mix for our section now too. And it's definitely not an even uh, easy section to get through, but uh, you know, last year losing to white bear two to one uh, in the section still kind of eats us, eats us up a little bit. And um, Hill's always just a thorn in our side. They're always just. And everybody's uh, really. <laughs> really. They're always at the top and, you know, Bill does such a great job with his players and, you know, those are those are those games that you, you circle on your calendar. I mean, we actually start off. We're in a, a little Thanksgiving tournament. If you you say you know, we're playing Centennial and Blaine to start our season off, and you know, we're coming right out of tryouts, we're going to have three practices, and we're playing some you know some of the best teams from their section, and then we move right into Maple Grove and White Bear Lake is our third and fourth game, and so we're gonna we're gonna be battle tested for sure by the time sections rolls around, and and that's the way we want it set up. Um, end of our season isn't easy. We end with, I think, St. Thomas, Creighton, White Bear, and then Rogers and the Holy Family are our last five games leading into sections. So we set it up to where, you know, we're going to be ready to go. Win or lose, you're going to learn something from every game. And that's why we want to play those top teams. And I think we're going to be from what I've seen, I haven't seen my, the problem is I haven't seen my guys now in, in like two months, which is driving me nuts. I had last skate was July 31st. I don't see yeah. them. And it's, you know, you hear from, you know, parents that have watched captains or whatever. Oh, they look good. They look good. I'm like, okay, well, I hope so. I hope they look good. Sounds good. I'll but, take your word for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at us to be in, you know, obviously in the, in the, in the top of our section for sure, you know, definitely, hopefully one or two, um, but definitely in the top four and we we're looking to make make some noise this year and you know hopefully get ourselves into that state tournament but it's not going to be easy we got to be tested and ready to go and um, just mark our games on the calendar because they should be exciting we're actually on I got an email the other day we're on Valley's North uh, nice. against your against your Zephyrs on mm -hmm. December 20th good luck coming out of Stillwater that's so. me being nice that's no, no, I'm just kidding <laughs> Should be a, it, it, it's good to see that Bally's is coming back after um, uh, COVID and putting high school games back on TV. And we got the Minnesota uh, uh, MN Hockey TV doing good things with the game of the I think it's the game of the week or game of the month, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. and getting as much high school hockey out there to you know just drive the excitement to the fans, and um, it should be a real exciting season with all the things that are going on. Certainly excited to go check it out. You guys can go check them out at St. Croix Valley, which they share with the Zephyrs. So thank you also for sharing that facility there. Uh, <laughs> um, and I have, I'm conflicted. I got to say, because I live in White Bear, but my dad went to Hill Murray. So I grew up a Hill Murray fan. So I never know how to feel about Hill or actually I don't like Hill. That's a lie. I don't like Hill. Really, so. <laughs> White Bear, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if the, my kids end up going through that association or not. Uh, we'll, we'll, to be determined. <laughs> you can always move to Stillwater. I could. That's, you know, that has been an option. That's true. I hear they've got yeah. some good varsity coaches out there. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, again, Greg, thank you so much. It was so great to uh, check in with you, hear what you're up to. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. No problem. We're going to take another quick break, you guys. We'll be right back. We're back. Thanks so much to Greg for joining us. Always a fantastic time catching up with from Wild Guys. I love the wild guys that continue to stick around. We had Devin Dubnik on not too long ago. Obviously, Vanek is with Greg in Stillwater. I just makes Minnesota, you know, we love us in Minnesota. A little Midwest love. Um, you like that? 
It was like you did it on purpose. I love it. Well, because I can no longer wear shirts that are cut out at all. Uh, Shout out to Vikings fans who cared about that. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Boobs. Um, Anyway, (laughs) uh, I do. (laughs) Just saying. I I noticed, guys. I noticed. Uh, You know, let's get to this week's up for debate, which don't include boobs. Uh, You know, I want to talk about young players needing to step up. We obviously talked about it in the first segment. Am I making you uncomfortable by saying that word? Me? Yeah. I don't think uncomfortable. I just, I think it's so funny. (laughs) Like, and I'm unprepared for it each time. And I shouldn't be because you've said it like five times in 30 seconds. It does feel like a slap in the face. Still catching me off guard. (laughs) boobs um anyway up for debate we talked about it in segment one with these injuries currently to your minnesota wild roster you need these young guys to step up so we already know what matt boldy is capable of i didn't include matt boldy again i even put an editor's note so you guys couldn't choose matt boldy we we love us some bolds but that's not what we were going with i went with marco rossi which also gets overplayed but had to do it uh i added connor dewar just because for a little mix he's still to me considered a young guy. Yes. He's been a a pretty constant on this Minnesota wild roster since last year, but he's a young guy that I think is still capable more. So that's why I included him. And then Mason Shaw, uh, he came up three knee surgeries, uh, is finally getting his, his work in the lineup looking fantastic. Again, obviously these injuries creating that opportunity. Kirsten, which of these young players do you think is going to be the most impactful? Because again, we still don't know how long Hartman, uh, Felino, and Duhamer, Al Greenway, should be returning uh, come Tuesday in L.A. I do think Hartman is serious and is going to be into maybe December from what I maybe have heard for rumblings. But uh, which of those three guys do you think is going to make the biggest impact? For me, this one is very easy and maybe because it's just fresh in my mind, but I'm going with Mason Shaw Tuesday night, his performance against the Montreal Canadiens. I just thought that entire game, he was fantastic. I mean, picking up a goal and then even towards the end of the game, just kind of taking on that enforcer role with Marcus Foligno out, like really, I forget which Montreal Canadian he absolutely laid out (laughs) on the ice, but he did (laughs) took the five minute major towards the end of the game, which it didn't even matter at that point, but just even to build up that energy in the arena to be able to, I mean, really only play a couple of games for the wild and then come in, be that force. I thought he was great on Tuesday. I'm literally isolating the Seattle game as just a bad accident and that (laughs) it's going to be a thing in the early season that happened and we're going to bounce back Mm -hmm. and it'll be great. Um, But I think he's going to be really impactful for the wild. And I think he's earning his spot on the main roster. I like it. And it's, it's tremendous. I mean, three knee surgeries. It's, I wouldn't come back from one. I'd be like, and you just, know what? I'm done. To, We're good. Even the mental toughness there, like how, just how debilitating it is when you get an injury and then how much time that you spend out physical therapy, just trying to get back to where you were not doing that once, not doing it twice, doing it three times. Like that kid is tough. It's insane. No, I, I would agree. I I'm excited to see what Mason shock can and continues to do. I'm going to go with the layup on Marco Rossi though, with, um, an asterisk on it. I want Marco Rossi in the top line. I want to see what that is, what can be done there. Okay. No, no disrespect to Freddie Goudreau. I think he earned that look and he's doing fine with Zuccarello and Kaprizov, but put Rossi there and just see what happens, especially at this point. Like, I think that's a, a general role for Rossi Rossi's and this isn't in a bad way. He's not a lunch pail, go to work kind of player. He is an elite skill player like Zuccarello, like Kaprizov. Everybody else is kind of a blue collar lunch pail kind of player. Rossi's not. So why not put that, those three chunks of talent all together and see what they could do. I mean, again, it's not necessarily just that he is a first round pick. It's not necessarily because he's had all the, I just, let's see it. I want to see it. So if, you put Rossi on that top line. I think he for sure is making the impact that you want and the impact that you need at this juncture in the season. So Marco Rossi, let's get at it. That, you know, I'm, I'm, I would like to see that too. Yeah. Give him a, not just one game, give him a few games to actually give him a chance. Just- um, but then with Gaudreau, like where do you, cause I know Rossi has been centering the Joe's line. So do you see Gaudreau going and flip-flopping or I don't know, where break it all he... apart again, keep hammering apart. Like it's nothing's really, even in the wins, none of those have been necessarily, I don't think convincing wins, right? Like 
it's funny because the Boston Bruins are going to win the Stanley Cup. I'm changing my mind already on that now because they've won. They might never lose another hockey game. You can't do that. No, I'm going to be the police right here. The hockey police. You cannot do that. You need to stay committed to what you said. Oh, I still stick with New York too. That seemed like you can a great pick game. one. You I did. I said one. New York. I I'm sticking with New York. But I'm saying the Bruins have won like six in a row, right? They might never lose another hockey game. And you look back, and if you're just looking at the score, you're like, oh, Minnesota, they pulled out a point against Boston. They didn't play well in that game. They didn't play well in necessarily any of those wins that they have achieved. So it's like you can't really point to a line and say like this line is this really amazing line. Like so, why not just continue to try things? And Dean is doing more of that this year which is good. Um, you know, and he, he split up the defensive pairings too, but yeah, I just, let's try everything, try everything. It's like a little, you know, just give it all a whirl. It's like that mastermind game. You guys know that game where you're like, nope. Oh, maybe I know nope. mastermind by Taylor Swift. I don't know the game. I like that song. I heard that song and came up on a daily playlist. I told Dane that I enjoyed that song and I enjoy the bejeweled song. And Dane's like, I knew you'd like bejeweled. Whatever you give me sparkle girl vibes. So that does not surprise me. Yep, that's just me. Little Jesse Pierce over here. <laughs> again, thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of Bardom Beauties. Again, thank you to Greg. Go check out a Stillwater Ponies game. Um, while you're in the area, check out a Matamide Zephyr's game. They share the same rink. Sorry about that, ponies. Uh, and uh, as always, be sure to circle your calendar for November 18th for our next Buttes Live presented by Grain Belt. Shout out to Grain Belt, one of our sponsors. Shout out to sodastick.com. Uh, get your merch at sodastick.com use code bar down beauties for 15 percent off uh they got some sweet christmas sweaters coming out because the holiday season i know kirsten's already in christmas mode like a psychopath but that's i am fine. staring at my christmas wreath and garland as we speak insanity um there's there's a whole other holiday in between here there just i is. group thanksgiving into the holidays i like i don't skip thanksgiving by any means but usually there's snow on the ground in minnesota it is no longer fall it is winter I mean, like, I mean, not right now. It was thunderstorming last night, but just crazy. <laughs> Shout out to Jim Beam. Uh, cheers to you. Cheers to me. Official uh, whiskey sponsor of the Minnesota Wild. Also Royal Credit Union. Less fee, more free. Shout out to Talk North uh, featuring us on our network. And uh, as always, to all of you guys for engaging with us, saying hi to us. I know a bunch of you have finally come up and said hello to me at Wild Games when you see me or when I'm out and about. Uh, appreciate that uh, Kirsten and I are always willing to say hello so don't be afraid we're pretty nice people most of the time uh, at least me Fred is not so nice so you know whatever it's fine <laughs> you guys are awesome share like rate all that good stuff we will see you next week at our live show and uh, for another new episode thanks for watching bye bye